Hi. I said, hi. hi. Great. Now, I, I never prepare myself for those presentations, so, you know, whatever will come, will come. Yesterday, I met with six amazing teens on a radio show. They asked me questions, many questions. And one of the questions that arised again and again and again and again, SATs, 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 we fear, are we going to get to college? Are we going to get to college? What are we going to do about it? So I want to offer you, I mean me offer, wants to offer you a solution that has nothing to do with preparing yourself for the SAT. You have to prepare your mind to get the SAT easily. And you have to start it as soon as possible. So I'll talk about it. So we talk about talents, talents, people have talents like to, to play great piano and they have talents for computers and they have talents for, but the question is how to define talent or how to redefine talent. And look at me, 60 years old. I went to school when I was six years old after teaching my puppets for three years. So I've had experience more than the teacher who taught me in school. So I got to school and she tells me, this is what you're supposed to do. And I tell her, you're wrong. This is the wrong way to teach. I mean, I've been teaching my puppets. And suddenly I found myself the most un talented person on earth. You know, when I was born, I was worried. 60 years ago. What will happen if I will not be unique? We all want to be unique. What will happen if I won't be talented in something? And I got this gift, the most untalented person on earth. So what do you do? You start to do something very natural, like most people do. You see, we've been born, all of us, with the passion to learn. Because if you don't have that passion, how you've been able to learn to walk and talk? Have you gone to see motivational speakers in order to have it when you were two years old? How did we lose it? Hmm. Couple of ways. Could be environments, different environments. You see, when we're young, we ask questions. And when we ask questions, we get answers. And when we had the answers, we try something. You try to walk once, you fail. You try to walk again, you fail. You try to walk again and you fail. But in the end, you know how to walk and how to talk. And suddenly, you never stop talking. Look at me. So the question for me was, as a non-talented person, in all after-school after activities I went to, I was the lousiest one. Martial arts, the lousiest one. Music, the lousiest one. Ballet, don't, 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 don't smile even. <laughs> yes, I did it. The lousiest one. I couldn't study at school. F in every subject every year. So what do you do? Hmm. You invent. Your own methodologies. Your own way of learning. Why? Because you've been born with passion and the ability to learn. That's what I had. And nobody had been able to ruin that. So I suddenly found myself developing different methodologies. I never stopped until today, 164 methodologies. In order to enhance something within me, which you can do the same. So my world has been about innovation. I had to re-innovate myself again and 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 I still do the same. Talent redefined. So what is talent for me? And how I redefined it in front of thousands of my students. I said to them, it's one thing. Can you learn faster? Why should you read a book for three, two hours if you can read it for half an hour? Why should you study mathematics four hours per day if you can do it like in 30 minutes? Why? Because people told you you're supposed to work hard Forget about it. Work smart. Is there any way in the world that I can learn 10 times faster 
That was my question, life question, life mission. And I developed a methodology for that. Yes, I'm a synthetic talent, but I'm quite talented. You will see. I can learn faster. You can learn faster. All the thousands of kids that have been through this process can learn so fast, which is unbelievable. So the guy who is learning faster and highly creative is the guy who is the most talented on earth. And how do you see it? Well, you see, some people, adult, they get like a new software or a new app, and it takes them like a whole month, two hours per day to figure out how it works. Have you seen them? <laughs> They're all around you. And suddenly, the son of my neighbor, who is 11 years old, 11 years old, this one, he gets to the app, he looks at it, ah! Mm, ah, mm, ah, mm. He, he knows how to use it immediately. I want to kill him. And you say, wow, kids of today, they are so talented. I mean, it takes me a whole month, and this guy does it in five minutes? How does he do that? And you wait another three minutes. And he tells you, you know what else you can do with it? And he has like 12 ideas. I mean, you hardly know, you hardly figured how to use it. And he has some new great ideas of how to use it in different situations. What does he have that we don't? So I spent 18 years of my life and millions of dollars to find, can talent be designed synthetically in the brain of human? So then everything they will do will make it easy for them, even the SATs. It doesn't matter what. So this is the work I went through. So within my research, I found what kids do in order to learn how to learn faster and how to be more creative. They just do pattern recognition. They recognize the elements and the sequence within things. I'll show you in a second, don't worry. So the other thing they do is very simple. After they understand the elements that create a sequence or a pattern of any kind or a process of any kind, they separate the element and recreate another pattern of it. They redesign it. That's the 13 is guy. What he did is he looked at it. He saw the system, how it works, all the loops, said, OK, I understand how it works. Then he separated them into parts reconnected them in a different way and said, and said to me, oh, you know, for what you can do with it? Oh, so many things you can do with it. So how does he do it? He can do pattern recognition, pattern design, and how does he do it so fast? By using analogies. The best way to learn fast something you've never encountered before in your life is one thing to do. One thing. One thing only. You say, this is like. That's the only thing you do. So if you want to teach me something in martial arts, and let's assume I know nothing about martial arts, but I know music quite well. You explain to me something in martial arts. My brain will pop up, search, say, oh, this is like that thing in music. Well, the other guy will say, I, 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 I don't know. But then I translate from music to martial arts, and I show him that I can do all those moves immediately. He says, oh, you're so talented. I mean, it took me like six months to learn those moves. How come you can learn them in seven minutes? This is the answer we're going to have. You have to know how to compose in real time. To compose new ideas, new processes, new systems, new structures, new concepts. And you must do it fast. I did an experiment. And with that experiment, I did something very simple. I took a triangle, I took a square, and I took a circle. And I put them one near the other. So there was a sequence, if you look at it from left to right. There's a sequence in there. Well, what is it? Well, you don't know what it is, but it doesn't matter. And then I took two groups of kids. I've done it to, you know, more than 1,000 times. Different groups, different ages. And I asked them one question. Could you take those shapes, triangle, square, and circle? Can you change the order from left to right? Of course you can. You can put the circle first and then the triangle and square. Or you can put the one inside the other. 
And every time you feel something different about it. Does that make you feel something? Maybe. But when it changes, does it feel like a little bit different? What's going on in here? Hey, is that an eye or something? Is it, does it look like three-dimensional in some way? Interesting. You can put it aside, one on top of the other. And now I brought the question to the groups. Group A and group B. Six kids here, six kids there. Three boys, three girls, fine. And ask them one thing. How many possibilities from left to right you have for a triangle, square, and a circle before you start to build them as sequences? And all of them tell you the wrong answer. Nine possibilities. Why do you say nine? It's never nine. But they don't know it yet. I did it with three years old, six years old, seven years old, and most of them will tell you nine. So group two will try to figure out how to make nine because they have a preassumption in their brain and they'll never find it. Group one will get some digital help. Digital in the way I speak and the words I use. And I said to them, you have a triangle, square, and circle. What if you eliminate one of them? What will be the answer then? You cross them, and you have two possibilities. So nobody is wrong when there are two parts, and when you have three, you make a mistake. How come? Because you can, you can put a square in a circle, or a circle in a square. No other way to do it from left to right, like horizontally, right? Sounds simple. And then I tell them, add. And they look at me, add, add. Oh, add, yeah, the triangle. And they add two triangles here. So they crossed both of these two, and then they add. And then I tell them, and what if you started with a square? And they tell you, oh, a square. How do you start with a square? Oh, I look, I do pattern recognition, and I redesign a new sequence easily. And what they do is very simple. And they never were educated to do it. First, I'm sorry, first what they do is they take the triangle circle and circle and triangle and cross them. And then and only then they will add, as you see, the squares. Nobody taught them the system, but they have created the system. And then I say, and now, oh, we can add the circles. But now they've created a better system. First, what they do, they put the two circles in the beginning, and then they cross the others. So there is a system. They have finished after one minute with four elements of wordings that I've been using, and the other kids will continue for the next 20 minutes to argue that there is another one more sequence that they will never be able to find. So what do we do? Now we see all these possible innovations of putting circles and squares, okay, like in, in, in a straight line. But can we translate it? Because the other team is still, remember, we finished after one minute. Look what happens now. Analogy. Take three colors. Draw the colors. Blue, red, green. And what will happen? And you see that group who have learned the system of the shapes, how to create them, two cross, two cross, two cross, take it into colors, and they start by systemizing without me asking them to systemize, and they create like a, a beginning of a blueprint. Blue, blue, red, red, green, green. And then they cross. Nobody asks them. They're five years old or 50 years old. So the brain can systemize innovation and creativity, right? So this is what they do. They do BB, RGGR, red, green, 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 red. Then they have the red, red, blue, green, green, blue. And they do it like in 30 seconds. Shapes, analogy to colors, it's there. The brain does it by itself. I don't need to talk, I don't need to teach. And then I give them numbers. And suddenly something very interesting happened. They do it in 20 seconds. They do like this. One, one, two, two, three, three. Let me do it, let me do it, they say, let me do it. Okay, it's <laughs> two, three, three, two, one, three, three, one, one, two, two, one. Who asked you to do it faster? Where is that tendency 
of learning faster by analogy and systemizing comes from. So why faster? I don't know. Then I give them some letters. Say D and E. And they know how to do his letters. Twice C, twice D, twice E, cross. And then ask them, OK, guys, C, D, E, D, R, E. Go and play. And each one of them is knowing how to play six melodies immediately. Just listen to it. Second song. And you see, every child can play zero mistakes, no practicing needed, analogy from one thing to another, six melodies immediately. And you add LNS. What is LNS? You tell them you have as many as L as you want, but you have to put a sequence of three letters. L and S should be in both all of the sequences. So they do understand, and they systemize it. And they say, OK, let's put an L in the beginning, L in the, in, in the middle, L in the end, and just add the S. And then they'll do the same with three S and two L. And then immediately they ask me what it is. And I said them, long and short. And they take each melody, C, D, E, six times long and short. Do, re, mi, short. O, do, re, mi, short, long. And they play 36 melodies. Zero mistakes. Wow. And then I tell them, you know that LNS can be loud and soft? Loud. And they take the 36 melodies times six possibilities of loud and soft. And within seven minutes, all of them can play 216 short melodies. Two more, they will know how to play six, six note melodies, 5,000 of them, zero mistakes. And they only practice seven minutes of a lesson. And then I tell them one more thing. Let's do martial arts. And they know how to use it in martial arts, 216 you know, sequences in martial arts. Face, chest, stomach. Face, stomach, chest. And they do it like this one, two, three, one, three, two, two, one, three, one, three, three, one, two, three, three, one, two. Long, short, long, short, whatever, just move. Have you seen somebody learning martial arts in seven minutes, 216 stands? Never in your life. Is it fast enough? And now they do it, all these moves, in the 14 different after school. Different after school activities. It could be music, it could be cooking, it could be chess, it could be math, it could be anything. They learn fast and they do. So the only thing I need from you, they practice three sessions of seven minutes, have a break of eight minutes, and then within three months, they learn 10 times faster and very highly creative. I developed 14,400 games. All of them are seven minutes. And geniuses, can come on. I need one person from the room. Please come over with me. Whatever, I don't have the time. 18 minutes, 18 minutes, 18 minutes. Come over, come over. What's your name? Marilyn. Have you ever composed music, Marilyn? No. Good. Listen how great she plays just by listening to a 15 minutes presentation. Never done it before. Black notes only. You have three notes. One, two, three, one, three, two, two, one, three, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, two, one. You can use five of them, 120 combinations. Play them, long and short, long, short, loud, soft. Play, now with me, come on. Two. 